members' uh, debate. Now, Thank you very much indeed, Councillor. I understand that, I understand that Deputy Louise O'Reilly will share time with Deputy David Cullinan. Deputy O'Reilly, in, in rising, can I ask you to move the amendment to the amendment, please? Uh, I move. Thank you. You have ten minutes between you. I am very, I very rarely find myself in a situation where I say I am speechless. I am speechless this evening listening to the nonsense coming from both sides of this house. We have Fine Gael and their very best friends here in government with them practically who are going to come together to ensure that workers cannot have a contract that simply reflects the hours that they work. All I can say is either ye have not read the legislation, you have not understood it, or you are being quite mischievous and deliberately disingenuous. Any one, any one of these options gives workers out there pause to be very, very concerned over the people uh, who are in government. Zero hours and low hours contracts wreck people's lives. Now, good luck to you. And fair play to you if nobody in your family will ever have to work under a low hours or a zero hours contract. But I have represented people and I have fought employers, the people that you're in here defending tonight. And well, you might nod, Minister, because you are in here doing the work of unscrupulous employers, employers who seek to exploit their workers. And you are doing their bidding and Fianna Fáil are doing their bidding and you should collectively hang your heads in shame. Give you can keep shouting at me, Minister. Deputies, you can keep deputies, shouting at me. Please. De deputy, deputy, deputy Collins, please. Deputy Collins, please. Deputy Collins, please. Please. Ken Carla, yes. if I might, please, please. Yeah. because I am being literally barracked you from are. both sides of the House. So I would ask that there might be a Deputy small amount of order. Please. Small amount of order. Please. Deputy Collins, I did not come in here to do what your mother should have done and put banners on you. Will you please allow me to speak? Please. No, please, 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 both Minister and Deputy are out of order. Please give way to Deputy O'Reilly, she has the floor. Please continue, Deputy. And maybe if you were slightly less provocative, we wouldn't get this response. Oh, well, Ken Carla, unfortunately, uh, I, I am moved to be such because uh, until re relatively recently, I had the privilege and the pleasure of representing uh, workers who unfortunately found themselves at the mercy of uh, the wonderful legislation brought in by the people in Fine Gael and also their, their best friends in Fianna Fáil, who, uh, when the opportunity presented itself, cut the minimum wage. So I think workers know if they are watching it this evening, they know who's on their side. They know who came in here to fight their corner. And I am very proud, Ken Corlett, the fact that I came in here to fight on behalf of working people as I have done all of my life. And I will continue to do. And that is precisely what this legislation seeks to do. It seeks to give the woman who is working on a low hour contract enough certainty. It seeks to give her a contract that will reflect the hours that she works. And these are people who are, they are in my family, Count Corla, they are outside of this chamber. And, you know, I, I, I feel, I, 
I'm sure the deputies there, the ministers there, live very charmed lives. They never come up against the need for this legislation to protect workers, but it is very real. There is a genuine need for these contracts to be brought in, for the protections contained within this legislation to be brought in. Workers need these protections. I have fought all my life against the people that the ministers here seek to represent, and I will continue to do so. And I'm aware now that my, uh, that my time is up, so I'll hand over to my Deputy colleague, Chapter to Cullen. Conclude. Dr. Margaret, um, I try to be uh, measured and I try to be fair, but it's very difficult when you read the Minister's response to our uh, bill here today. It is incredibly disingenuous and very, very inaccurate. And if the Minister actually reads the bill, and on page three of the bill where it talks about provision of banded air contracts, it talks about an employee having the right to move into an increased weekly band of hours. Not extra hours, a weekly band of hours. So let me make this very, very simple for you, Minister, and the Minister for State, because it seems that we have to bring it down to that level. If you are Mary, and you work in a retail company, and you are on a 15-hour contract, but for six months you have worked 32 hours, you move into that band of 30 to 35 hours, and you have to have worked for six months continuously on average of those hours. That means, that means that your contract would no longer be a 15-hour contract, but you would be in the band of between 30 and 35, but you would still be on the 32 hours, the average of what you have done, and it means you cannot be forced to work less or work more against your will. So it doesn't mean workers get extra hours. It means that they have a contract which is reflective of the hours that they actually do. And you know that, I think, and you are being disingenuous. So that's the first point. The second point is this, uh, that you can, of course, find any reason not to um, support this uh, bill, and that's what uh, the government um, seeks to do. This bill does have the support of the Irish Congress of Trade Unions. It does have the support of the Mandate uh, Trade Union. It does have in the bill sufficient checks and balances. This does not apply, as the Minister said, and there were some extraordinary contributions in her uh, speech. It says that this should not apply across the whole economy, and this should not apply to multinationals where there is established practices which work. But that's not what would happen. For the vast majority of workers in those big multinationals that you speak about, they're not on these if and when contracts. This deals with a particular problem. It has no impact whatsoever on somebody who's contracted full time to do a job of work. What this does is deals directly. And if a number of deputies from Fianna Fáil, who in my view are also being disingenuous, uh, reference the UL study. Recommendation four in that study says that if a worker works for six months, an average set of hours, that's what their contract should reflect, which is what this bill does. They reference the six months, and yet you come in and you talk about all of the positives in the UL uh, report, and then you find every excuse not to support one of its key uh, recommendations. Now, I, I want to be fair to Fianna Fáil, and I want to appeal to them. We have put down a very reasonable amendment to your amendment, where we are saying, if you genuinely believe that some sort of pre-legislative scrutiny needs to be done. Support our amendment, which says that it should be done, that it should be three months after we come back in the autumn. That's sufficient time for the committee to do its work. Don't put it off for a year, because that is just unfair to those people who want us to act now. We are meeting you halfway, and we are doing our best to do so. We want this bill passed now and moved into committee stage so we can have those discussions. But in an effort to get this through as quickly as possible, and so workers don't have to wait. And I don't accept many of the criticisms from the government because, as I said, they are inaccurate and they are misleading in terms of what the bill actually does. But for those of us on this side, including Fianna Fáil, who say that they want this issue dealt with, then support the amendment that we've tabled. And I think it's very reasonable, and I would appeal to you to do so. And I will sit down tomorrow with Deputy Collins or mem members of Fianna Fáil and talk to, talk to them about the concerns that they have. And the Deputy uh, stated earlier, and he's right, that we, in a presentation that we gave earlier and in conversations I had with deputies from different parties, that we, of course, will take on board suggestions. And I agree with the Minister in relation to small businesses. So we're open to discussion. We're open to have our bill amended. But that's what the legislation is for. That's why we have several layers of legislation. It's why we have second stage and committee stage and report stage. 
But it seems to me you just want to reject this bill out of hand in a disingenuous way because it's coming from the opposition, rather than actually accept the bill, deal with whatever flaws you th say that are in it, let's have that debate. But my primary um, 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 appeal is to the Fianna Fáil party, and I really hope that you support their amendment. And I say that to all members of this House. If you support the amendment that we've tabled to your amendment, I think that we can do what you say you want done, but do it in a quicker time frame, and Thank let's you very get much. this done once and for all for those workers. Thank you very much, De Deputy Cullinan. Uh, now that the debate has concluded, I uh, must put the question on the Sinn Féin amendment to the Fianna Fáil amendment, and the question is uh, that the amendment to the amendment be made. Shivsha Ata Evolver and Hesht Abridish Ta, Shivsha Ta Nakina Abridish Neil, Neil Stolum Gulen Keshritze, Votal. Uh, the division, therefore, is postponed until the weekly uh, division time on Thursday next, in accordance with Standing Order 72. Message